This is a pair of headphones. It was a headset, but the microphone sucked, so I pulled it off. But I got this many years ago, as you can tell by the fabric covering wearing off. It is one of the best, actually it is the best pair of headphones I've ever owned in my life. And unfortunately, some time ago they broke. The headband. The headphones still worked, but the headband broke. And as you'll see in a moment, it was very slowly cutting the wire through. Thankfully it was a nice strong wire because these are quality headphones. But I tried to buy a new pair and they don't make them anymore. And so then I tried to buy a pair of Sennheisers for a lot of money. Every review is wonderful. They were terrible. I will never buy a Sennheiser product again. And I got so angry at them, at my wasted money that I couldn't get back, that I ripped them apart and I used them to hold my lapel microphone for recording camera videos. So I decided to try and fix these however I could. So this is an illustration of my past attempts, which was to... There's duct tape under here. I duct taped them first. That didn't hold. And then I electrical taped over it. And that didn't hold either. The, the tape worked fine, but the tape is not designed to hold against this motion. It's designed to hold laterally, not along it. So all that happened is the glue just kind of came off. And you can see better what the problem is. This is supposed to be connected to a piece in there. You can see the broken part here. So that part's in there, and this is ripping the cable out. That doesn't look good. And this is after I cleaned it up with some alcohol. Pro tip, to get glue off, just use some of your, you know, 99% cleaning alcohol. You don't need Goo Gun or anything for this. That's for the tougher jobs. But anyway, here's the wire. So you can see why this is a dangerous problem. So there was a panel that I was able to unscrew and open it up, and you can see, once again, here's the problem, because this piece here is what's broken off. And for fun, you can see how the mechanism works. This is the headband, and it, it goes in and out, so it's adjustable, and they've got a little... A little coil here, a little springy. So that's how it's able to stretch safely, because this part gets longer and shorter. This is the other side that did not break and what it's supposed to look like. So this part here gives, it, it, it locks against here so it won't come out, and then this part stretches, and it's all one piece. So basically this is the back half and this is the front half, and the cable is secured between, and then comes out there. So I was able to pull it out. I'm, I'm, I had actually anticipated that I would have to rip the entire thing apart and put my own wires in, but fortunately not. This thing was made really good. But this is how you would do it, is you would just, you know, pull this fabric off, run your own wires and re-solder if you needed to. You know, you have to get in here. But fortunately, the wire still worked. Barely. So I pulled this out and I decided to splint it. So this long extension of wire I was able to push back into the headphone and the slack is in there. And there's a little channel. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little channel that the wire runs in. So I kind of shoved it back in the channel mostly. I couldn't get all the slack back in, but I got most of it in. And then I held it very tightly and I just duct taped it, or electrical tape rather. I electrical taped it so that it would just hold just a little bit. You know, this is the band-aid. Then I put the cover back on, and of course, because of the tape, it was too thick and didn't go on. So the screws are being held in by a prayer. But this is at least covering the cable again, and it's giving it rigidity. Because obviously the brake isn't going to have rigidity anymore, so this is the only rigidity. I was going to use paper clips, but fortunately I was able to get this back on. So I didn't need to use paper clips as like an actual bone splint. So then I very forcefully shoved it back in. It was quite an effort, but I got it in. I had to bend the plastic a little bit, but I got it back in. And you can see this is not secure, but it's secure enough. So then once I got it in and I adjusted it to the right, you know, extension, I, uh, electrical tape the crap out of it. And this is actually out more than I would like, but I compensate by having the other side not as far out. But I needed to have the the brake. I needed the brake to be outside because there was no way I was going to get all this in there with all this tape on it. So I just put it in as far as I could. Then I secured the outer panel. And again, these screws really did not want to go in. So they're, they're kind of held in with hope. So then I absolutely duct tape the crap out of it. I used half a roll. A roll only costs a dollar, so this is only 50 cents of duct tape, but I taped and taped and taped and taped and taped all the way up here, all the way down here, and I even taped over the screws. So 
everything's being held in like that. So this imparted rigidity, the, the plastic cover inside, and all of this tape actually makes it almost completely rigid. That's why I put so much on. So I had to get the extension right, because I'm never going to put it in or out again. It has to fit my head. And then the side that was good, I went ahead and taped that as well, so that it stays at the same extension. And it gives it a little extra securement so it doesn't break the same way this one broke. But anyway, that's the repair. No actual electronics in this video, I suppose. But I was expecting to, that's why I made the video in the first place. I expected the wire to be broken and I'd have to replace it. But you can see, all you'd have to do is open this up, remove wherever the wire is connected to, just find wherever it's plugged in, put your own wire. And what I'd recommend, one last tip, if you're going to do that, then try and check continuity first. Because you might have, you know, a couple wires soldered in in the connector or whatever, and then wires soldered here, and you want to make sure they go to the right place. You should, there should be markings on the PCB, presumably, to know which one's which, but just in case. But that's it, all fixed. So for some time and about 70 cents worth of electrical tape, I was able to repair these wonderful, expensive headphones. So there's another tally in the win column for right to repair. So while I look bemused at how thin and pathetic this roll of electrical tape now looks, I'll be seeing you.